I miss the old Kanye, straight from the gold Kanye. Chop up the soul Kanye, set on his goals Kanye. I hate the new Kanye, the bad mood Kanye, the always rude Kanye, spazzing the new. Let's get into this. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ruby Radio Show podcast. My name's Kyle Moran. Today, we have a special guest, uh, the Floof Artist. Um, Floof, welcome to the show. Um, so before I want to get started, I just I picked you up on Twitter, and I just want to say, what do you think of the Bowser et situation going on, on Twitter? I, I feel like it's an infection and virus that's caught onto my phone. It's a good infection. It's a good virus, but I want to hear, what do you think about it? Well, it's, it's just a resurgence of Rule 63, you know. If it exists, there's a gender-bent version of it. The Nintendo Direct, uh, the, uh, what is it, the, the, the Crown Shroom or whatever, that, that pretty much just set it all off. And then people are like, oh yeah, now we can make a uh, gender-bent of, of characters now and, and make them hot and shit. And I don't mind it, it's, it's awesome. I feel like Good the, shit. I feel like the Tumblr crowd kind of came over to oh. Twitter and just went ham. And now there's another one. There's another one. There's like uh, the one with King Boo and stuff like that. Oh hell yeah! I think the Booet one is is literally my favorite. I don't. I'm not big on Bowser. Is it the tongue? Be honest. No. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> a lot of the ones that I've seen are really really cute, where she's just like hiding her face and stuff, being shy. Uh, okay. Okay. I love I like that it. shit. All right, but um, getting back to um, getting back on topic, uh, tell yeah. me about yourself. Tell me what do you do? Um, I guess on here on YouTube or something like that, or on Twitter. Uh, I, I I steal memes. I, I make cancerous videos this and, and I okay. sleep. <laughs> That's basically it. I don't really do too much like stuff. I really want to post more of my animation stuff that I've been doing for class. But I, I just don't have the time to properly edit it and upload it. So it's like, I, I start one thing, then I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great when I upload it. But then it's like two months later, and I forget that I'm supposed to upload it. And I haven't gotten back to like a lot of my stuff. Yeah, yeah, you had that a little um, animation of the uh, the tail waving back and forth. And that, w- that was really cool. Did someone make that for you? I made that. Oh, you made that yourself? I drew it. Uh, when did you get interested in animation? Um, volume two, where it was like, yeah, uh, Ruby, it's a thing. If 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 people that are you know, quote unquote indie, they're not really not anymore. They're all corporate hacks now. But uh, uh, they, for a time, I thought they were like, yeah, these guys are like an independent production. They're able to make their own show. This is kind of this is kind of neat. It might be cringy, but it, it's kind of cool that they're able to do this in their time. And I was okay. like, yeah, if they could do that, I could do that. And if I could do that, I could draw. And so I started drawing. Well, I started drawing before that, but it was like, it, it really became more prominent, I guess, from that point. For me, I, I can't draw for shit. I can color eh, semi-good. I still need to work about like shading and everything like that. But uh, going on to YouTube, I look on your bio. It says you're a show critic, but mostly what I'm seeing is a, a oh white TV. Bio. Oh my god! <laughs> your white I, 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 your YouTube bio. I went to the yeah uh, flu <laughs> shit artist at YouTube. Okay. Well, I looked into it, and it said you were a show critique, but mostly what I saw on your channel was um YouTube poops. Yes. And they, uh, so um, I have no soul. <laughs> have no soul um i wanted to say have you made like any uh outsources or made any connections to other people in the youtube community nope, nope. i nope. I'm, I'm just kind of like actually no wait there is one time one time it was when uh Cronex in the eight seals came out <laughs> now for those who don't know it's a terrible show don't watch it it's complete hot trash the only good thing about it are the parodies of it it's by uh the original is by some dude named like misty Cronexia, but but the ytps are are the thankest and the best thing that have come from it so uh, I, okay <laughs> it's, it's I, a thing it's a thing i'll have to check it out after this um moving on uh lately you've been a ruby critique with your um uh what was the series name Ruby's oh, Ruby broken. is broken series, and you've also been doing like um, 
ship poster animation for the intro series. Uh, can you walk us through that process? Uh, either one. Uh, I'll start with the animation stuff because that's easier to talk about. So what I would do with each intro is I would just watch the intro and then I would draw each scene out. But I would like do it in a way where I could just animate stuff really simply. And each one usually takes me like two days, three days to do. But that's just because it's a lot of a lot of scenes, a lot of coloring, and a lot of uh, a lot of boredom. <laughs> For the faces and the expressions, I just pretty much went with whatever I, I felt like at the time. I, I don't care. There's no consistency. And there doesn't need to be because it's beautiful. But Blake, Blake in the volume four intro edit, she's in the thumbnail too of the video. That was totally deliberate. Whereas like everything else is just kind of random shit. But I don't care. That's, that's my style with, with those. And I'll do one for volume six in case anyone asks. I'll definitely do one when that comes out. Yeah, you got you know, some hungry fans, you know, waiting for that volume six intro edit. And we'll oh, no. talk and we'll oh, sorry. talk about that. I'm sorry. We'll talk about volume six a little bit later. Um so the way you are labeled within uh, the community is considered uh anti Ruby. Like you bash on it, people really don't like you bashing on it. Um have you ever got like any you know, feedback or backlash for uh, holding that position of the show? Oh, definitely. It's 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 like like I don't like the show because it's just it just kind of fails at every every level, especially volume five. They're like, yeah, we're an action show, so let's not do any action. Let's have all the characters in the room for ten episodes doing nothing. And I to the point that I even made a video making fun of the fact that they sit in a house in real time for two hours doing nothing and that time is in the video two hours four minutes is the exact is the perfect time the actual physical time from them leaving lionheart's uh office to uh crow getting that phone call yeah it's good <laughs> okay. but for, for people that like i didn't really answer your question uh for people that uh yeah, I don't know. They just they dislike me because I, I don't like Ruby. I think it's kind of kind of dumb because you know people have different tastes, and some what some people like it might be bad, like the prequels. But prequels make good memes. Hello there. Uh, oh, but Ruby's okay. like so bad that you, the only only good thing that can come out of it is is making fun of it. I think it's, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's good. It's like uh, the room. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. Oh no! It's not so bad. It's good. It's so bad. It's bad. <laughs> but it's so bad that uh, you can you could write better. Anyone could write better. I think. And... So you, so you think the writing is the main problem of the show. It definitely is. I mean, it's like these people are doing some pretty, pretty good animation, but the issue is that their animation's inconsistent and buggy and crap. They're able to pull off good animation when they need to, but they just because of the fact that direction's so shit, the writing's such shit, it just it just falls apart. It, it fails. It's like Chronexia. It doesn't. Nothing works. It's it's bad. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, what do you like most about being anti-Ruby? Anti-Ruby? Anti. I think I'm more like... What's the word? What are the I'm pros? I'm more like anti-RT, really. I mean, they kind of like... They really screwed it up. They kind of... They went like, oh yeah, this is an action show, but we're going to have Miles Luna. I'm not good He's at a, a lot like a of memory-related things. <laughs> it's really, really bad write a season where there is no action i don't know it's it's kind of wait what was the question <laughs> i'm not good He's at a pilot, lot of memory guy. related things the question was what do you like most about being uh labeled anti-ruby what do i like most about that yeah what are the pros the pros are you know that the show is bad because you've watched better shows that do the same things, but in other ways. I think the best thing you can possibly get out of it is that if you know that Ruby is a is a bad show, which which it is, you can be like, yeah, 
you can learn how to see the inner workings of the show or other shows and be like, see what works, what doesn't work in, in a given context. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff. It's why I like all right, uh, all right. uh, Utena and Evangelion so much. It's because they are able to do these things masterfully. Whereas like, you know, uh, Master of Ragnarok and Bless of Ahenger, like, and Ruby suck, you know? <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Okay. Uh, what do you hate about being anti Ruby? What is the negatives? Is it like negatives. I know you mentioned backlash, but uh, the you could say there's like none. Just stay up late arguing with people over semantics, and it's just stupid and dumb. Uh, the other negatives are you'll have people be like, "How can you possibly uh, hate this show? You know what is wrong with you?" And you get these people that are just like. They don't understand that shows need to have stuff happen in them. So that would be, you know, interesting. Yeah, okay, you're <laughs> breaking up a little bit, but like you said, shows need to have stuff that happens in them. Yeah, shows need to have stuff that happen in them. Even even if it's like a uh, man with a movie camera, a uh, 1929 movie, where they just filmed random scenes, but they piece it together masterfully. Even things like that, they still are far more entertaining than, than something like Ruby, where your characters aren't doing anything. I or, got you, or, I got yeah. you. Now, speaking of Ruby being terrible, um, which of the four horsemen of the apocalypse is the worst? Would you say Bernie, the leader of RT, Miles, the writer, Carrie, the sideman, or Gray, the blocker? Oh, it's Gray. It's, it's definitely Gray. Why, um, why would you say it's Gray? Why is he the worst of the four? Well, he's blocked me on Twitter for one. Uh, but two, uh, he's, he's such a crime. He uh, well, he blocks anyone on Twitter. Actually, anyone who disagrees with, with RT or Ruby or anything, it, it's crazy. You don't even you just need to leave not even leave like a single comment, and he'll just auto block you. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, but more than that, he's writing Genlock, and from what I've seen, Genlock is going to be way worse than Ruby. And I had to do research to figure out what the show was about, besides, you know, oh, we have David Tennant, oh, we have Dakota Fanning, and it's just... Oh, we have Michael B. Jordan. So oh, yeah, that, that dude, too. How the it, fuck did they get Michael B. Jordan? Apparently, uh, uh, from what I've researched, uh, Michael B. Jordan's company is helping fund this show a bit. And he, he gets to be the main character. He's Julian Chase. He's he, the protagonist. I hope he realizes it's not Creed and it isn't Black Panther. Oh, it's it's definitely not. Uh, Genlock's supposed to be basically Mecha, the anime. You have, uh, for those who don't know, because you probably don't know, the plot is uh, humanity is on the brink of extinction, which is like every Mecha anime ever. You have, uh, what is it? There's two, they're in a global fight or war or something. Chase is on the good guy side, and there's some bad guys, and they're fighting and stuff. And they have to, the good guys have to make a diverse team of pilots to beat the bad guys. And Gray says, yeah, this is, uh, I'm gonna use 2016 politics as, as my means for, uh, theming in the show. And it's like, no, Gray. That's not, that's not what you do. Why are you destroying RT by moving all the fight animators onto Genlock? Why are you doing this? What does this serve? What's the point? Which is know, I'm kind of ranting, but go ahead. No, 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 I, I like the ranting. What doesn't make sense to me is that, well, like you said, why is uh, Gray moving all these animators? But I thought, like, is Gray, like, the leader of animation department and stuff like that? I, or? I believe he is head of animation. Uh, and that's probably why he blocked me, because I said it was shit. His animation crap. It's not consistent. There's two ways you can go about it. You can animate your entire, you know, scene in one go, and then c cut it up however you want. Or you can animate your scene. If you have too much data, you can just cut it, but then you copy-paste the coordinates of every model and stuff, and paste that. So the last frame of the shot is the first frame of the next shot. You can do that. But they don't do either of those things, and instead just, just animate completely new shots every time. It's fascinating. Because what, what? I went to Japan, and at that school, they have animation like that. But their animation is consistent in every single shot, because they're able to make you best use of 3D animation. Whereas uh, Grey and Rooster Teeth don't. It's really weird. 
Yeah, what boggles my mind is that Genlock looks like a downgraded version of Halo. Which I feel like Rooster Teeth just cannot get away from. It's like, oh, Halo was made as popular. We have to do something like Halo. So I, I see, like, these mech suits. I think Spartan armor. I see, you know, laser guns and stuff like that. I think Halo. So it's like, it's it's not copyright infringement, but... About the designs, uh, one of the... What is it? There's this doctor. His name's, like, Dr. Rufus or something. He's voiced by David Tennant. His robot assistant... It's a direct ripoff of Unit 01. No, no, no Unit 02 from Amy. Okay, 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 okay. okay. It doesn't help that he's uh he's admitted to yeah we're gonna straight up take designs from other anime. You can tell what anime our mechs are inspired by in this episode in an interview. Let me get back on track. So, what made you? What got you noticed in the YouTube sphere? I noticed that you were on... What I noticed you from was the Nomad of Nowhere uh, first episode where Fat Man uh, had you on along with... I forgot who the other guy was. But that's where, you know, you first made your appearance to me. But I want to know where you first got, like, a bunch of subscribers or a bunch of views and people started throwing your name around. Uh, probably Ruby is Broken or... What is it? Yeah, it's gotta be Ruby is Broken. Let me the intro the series or the Broken series? Pretty sure, well, the intro series definitely helped. That was uh, shared by, uh, uh, what's his face? I mean, not what's his face. Murder Birds. He's a cool dude. He's, he's nice. He's awesome. Go subscribe to Murder. He is, he is a cool dude. Give him your support. Ooh, you brought up a yeah. sore spot with me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, but no, Murder, that... Murder's, Murder to me is that he's a pretty nice dude. I met Have... him at RDX. He, he's cool. Oh, you met him at RTX. Okay. Well, on yeah. a personal level, I feel like he's a great guy. I just don't like his YouTube channel. I feel like he's over dramatic. I understand, you know, stories can make you cry. I understand that. I just think he's a little over dramatic in front of the camera. You just hate me because I'm black. Where Fat Man is more along the lines of how you actually view it, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Which is why I value his critique and review. Uh, uh, as a higher opinion than, I guess, Murder Birds. Plus, Murder Birds made me go onto the Ruby Amino apps, and that place is hell. Oh, I haven't heard about Amino, but I've, I've, I haven't been to Amino, but I've heard things about it, and it's... It's it's an authoritarian cesspit, I would say. Authoritarian? I would just say it's just... Totalitarian authoritarian. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't, I haven't, I don't, I haven't seen it. I can't really tell what's going on because all I've been hearing is stuff other people are saying about it, so I can't really give you an honest opinion about it. Alright, well, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, uh, let me know. Let me know how, what you find. Uh, some good. No, some good I art. didn't feel like it. Uh, I, I don't have the time to go on to Ruby Aminos and stuff like that. A few more points I want to hit on before I let you go. Um, what do you think of the Ruby games? Now, I don't know if you played any of them or not. I surely haven't. I'm not going to throw money at a half-finished game. But there's the the first game they put out, Grim Eclipse. Uh, I I only know of Grim Eclipse from Shammy's review. He's also a cool dude. Go subscribe to him. He's uh, but five. it's it's pretty bad. It's it's like a hack and slash kind of thing. I, I'm not big on at anything with Ruby, but. It's kind of weird how they took kind of like a similar thing to Kingdom Hearts. I, I love that game, uh, yeah. and they like made it worse. I don't. I don't know. It's it's not. Grim Eclipse sucks. Don't buy it. So how does the story stack up? Well, about as well as a Jenga tower in a tumble dryer on the top floor of the World Trade Center during an earthquake. Poorly is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, the weird thing is is that when I, I watch Shammy's review as well, and he hits on a bunch of amazing points, like um, the characters, it would better, it would, it would serve better if the characters existed in a vacuum. Every character's actions are retarded, their motivations behind these actions are non-existent, and the four main characters don't even really talk to one another. Now, this is probably largely due to the fact that there are so many non-canonical character combinations that you can run so the game doesn't know how to have the characters interact with one another without giving itself a fucking aneurysm. It does not look polished. Uh, Rooster Teeth, uh, they don't, they don't understand a lot of things. It's really, really bizarre. 
Like, they don't they... understand feedback. Yeah, no, I, I, it's not that, like, obviously everybody's just trying to help, but the thing that drives me crazy is how people will speak with such a matter-of-fact, I know everything tone. That's the thing that always certainty. drives me fucking crazy. There's, like, because you'll get, like, um, I, I learned to deal with this just on, like, video comments. People will make a comment, maybe it's, like, a criticism or something, and you go, oh, okay, yeah, that's a fair, that's a fair critique. But you don't want to listen to them because of the way they said it. And sometimes people get in there and they'll talk exactly like they know how, like, the production process works. Like, oh, this is clearly why this was animated this way. It's like, motherfucker, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> but the reason I fucking hate you is because you talk like you do and other stupid people listen to you. That's my biggest fucking problem with it. And that oh, yeah, he's... He's... He's a mess, but I'm... Uh, the second thing is... Um Besides for Grim Eclipse, Blue Blaze, on the other hand, well, not Bay by Rooster Teeth, but has Ruby characters in it, actually is... Blaze Blue. Blaze Blue? Is it Blaze Blue? It's Bla it's, Bla it's Blaze Blue. I, I pronounce it Blaze Blue, but that's because I'm a, I'm a weeb. Um, Whatever. Yeah, it it's, it's looks cool, but I have not gotten any chance to play any of that kind of game. I don't I don't have, like, those, uh... Was it... 2D side scrolling fighting games. I don't, I don't really do that. It got me interested because it felt like it was some sort of injustice game where, you know, you, you pick your favorite character from, like, you know, a comic book, but then in this case it's an anime. But what bothered me the most was the whole DLC controversy with oh. half the teams being locked behind <laughs> DLC. It got so much press that even game. Uh, channels on YouTube like Young Yeah and Jim Sterling started making case about like Meldana being locked behind a paywall. I don't think it was the fact that you know Blake and Yang were behind the paywall. It's just the fact that they were doing paywalls not only for uh, those two characters but for like the other like 50% of the cast. It's like why why bother making a game selling it for like sixty dollars and then charging charging the people who spent that money just to get the game more money to be able to, you know, access half of it when, you know, the characters all reused assets, except for, you know, Blake and Yang. It's it's criminal, it's ridiculous. DLC is stupid, and it should be... I honestly think DLC should be... Uh, you should hang DLC it from a noose. Be illegal. Nigga, fuck you, pay me. But that's, that's me being extreme. Uh, definitely no microtransaction deep box bullshit. Now, what's funny is that, like, is that uh, Mortal Kombat does that. They did that with Jason, the Predator, and I don't know if it was Hannibal Lecter. It was someone else. I don't know, but they did three characters who were locked behind DLC, and people paid for that. I just think it crosses the line when you have literally half the roster behind DLC. Oh, yeah. Now, if it's like a 99 cent DLC, I mean, that's scummy, but it's like a good, I'd pay for that, I'd pay for that. I'm pretty sure lots of people would pay for it if it was like 99 cents or something like that. You just want to rake in a little bit more, of course, but people are outraged about that. But what people are outraged a lot about is the new Rooster Teeth game involving the uh, Ruby characters. Um, I don't know the, Arcane Arena or something like that. Oh, uh, is, that the, uh, is that the Chinese mobile game? It looks, I swear to God, it looks like Clash Royale had a retexture or a reskin. Wait, it's, it's, it's Amity Arena, right? Uh, Amity, I, I, it's Arena something. I forgot the name, I'll put the image on screen. But it looks like a straight ripoff of Clash Royale. Huh. I think, I think I've heard of it. I've seen a lot of comments about it. And, uh... I'm surprised they're not getting, like, Aka, sued over it. Aka has done, uh... He's he's posted some reviews of that sort of thing on uh, on his Twitter. Shane's letter came out, and I think that was discussing, uh, you know, Monty's I guess friend, I guess Shane. I, I don't know his I don't know his connection very well, but his letter came out saying that they weren't following Monty's vision, they weren't following his steps. You know, after volume after volume three, they were going off his own path, and. I guess this is like a source of outrage, but really, I think it's past the point. And I think I want to make this point clear if people actually see this, is that you can't keep using Monty's uh, image 
for what's going in the future if he's already gone. I think his image and I think his view of Ruby ended uh, mid volume three or end of volume three or whatever you want to. You can claim it's two, but whatever. His vision ended. Now people are saying like, oh, you need to get outraged. You know, Muffin Man Dan made a video like this. This is despicable. This is this is absolutely terrible. Rooster Teeth is doing this. And like one thing I must express is that Shane was the first person to call out that Rooster Teeth is not respecting Monty's legacy. See, reading more of what he has to say, you pick up that Rooster Teeth really isn't trying their hardest to live up to what Monty wanted. They didn't listen to what he said in the past. It's all corporate bullshit. It really does suck. But yeah, Dan, can you not see why? They can't take inspiration from a dead man. And so, obviously this is on Miles and Carrie's shoulders now, and of course Gray's. <laughs> but I wanted your piece on this. What do you What do you think? Do you think people still should be outraged that they're not following this dead man's motive three seasons in now, or that we should just, like Monty, move on? I think that, well, Chains Leader is kind of, you know, there's a lot of emotional stuff behind it, but it's pretty pretty obvious that RT can't follow Monty stuff, but that's because, you know, Monty isn't there to, you know, tell him what to do. He's just kind of, well, he's dead, so he can't really do anything. Um, I feel like there, there doesn't need to be an outrage, but there definitely needs to be a uh, discussion about the show that the uh, that Miles and Carrie are just refusing to do. That the show is going to continue going downhill. They want to they want to railroad it, the show for this uh, epic journey sort of thing. You know, what? get the four uh, uh, Dragon Balls to summon Shenron. Get the get the uh, four not Dragon Ball maidens to get the Dragon Balls to summon the Shenron. Now you mentioned discussion. What, what do you mean by that? You meant by like Miles and Carrie had to make a discussion or make or make a statement or something. What do you what do you mean by that? They should have an open discussion with like everyone about like what's really going on. But they're not going to do that because if they do, they'd be revealed. They reveal themselves to be the hack frauds that they are, and they can't do that. That would damage their image. But I do feel like a discussion about you know the show, what what their overall plan is for Ruby, things like that. They don't need to spoil anything. But oh yeah, no, you can't. You can't, you can't ask that question. Or questions. Uh, we want to try and answer as many as we can. No asking for jobs. No super long-winded stories. No thirty-seven part questions. Um, please, no bummers. We want to try and have fun and laugh and have a good time. So, like, no super downer questions if you can handle that and yeah. uh, anything. Oh, oh, no spoiler questions. Yeah. <laughs> no. If, if your question starts with, so do you think we'll see? Busted a move. <laughs> Just a, a few ground rules. We are not going to answer spoiler questions. So please, for the love of God, don't ask them. Yeah. Bro, uh, imagine paying like fucking $200 and then going to a place to ask one question and you get turned fucking down. It's a cartoon. Don't give a shit about our work. So my question is, how did John obtain Pyrrha's weapons after the fall of Beacon? <sighs> I said no bummers. I'm just it's kidding. a cartoon. It already oh, that was that was the fucking worst thing. I honestly should just go up to the stand if I ever do, which I probably won't. Go up to the stand and say, uh, "This is a question for Gray," and it's like, and it's like, "It's okay, Gray. You can block me later on Twitter." And I'll be like, "Ask him like a spoiler question," and I'd probably get escorted out by uh, <laughs> by security and stuff like that. But it's really boggling my mind. Like people are not deliberately trying to ask spoiler questions like they're asking like is neo coming back or uh, are we going to see you know outfit changes and stuff like that you can say yes and leave it be and let the theorists go crazy that only draws up more attention for the show but they're like no we don't want to no spoiler question no spoiler questions remind me that when i make uh when I actually start releasing episodes of The Hall of Fallen, which is a show that I'm working on, uh, that I'll, I'll do interview stuff and I'll answer your shit. I have, I have a question. Uh, um, uh, how old are you? No spoiler questions. How old am I? I'm 22. <laughs> no spoiler, spoiler questions. questions. Yeah. I think the last point we're going to hit on, obviously, you could see this coming a mile away. Volume 6, Hopes and Dreams. Uh, what exactly do you want 
out of volume six. Of course, reasonably. What do you? Fight scenes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? What else? No, that's gonna uh, be wrong. Fight scenes, but that's that's too. After volume five, those expectations are are too high now. Uh, for volume six, you can't I... have a fight scene. You'll get a talking scene. You will <laughs> like it. I, I think for volume six, what I'd really like is uh, really like it if they uh, if they not only just animated stuff the, the way it should be, but I doubt they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that at all. Uh, I want they're them heading... to animate stuff correctly. I want them to not do s stupid stupid character things where they like they go out of their way in this really roundabout way to try to explain something instead of just condensing it down cut cut lines that don't need to be said we don't need to hear about how the maidens are important 15 times over in the same conversation don't you know it's tell don't show that's not Bruce Dickens game you're playing the wrong 3D chess man uh, it's I don't know now the question they're heading to Atlas in volume 6 is that correct? Uh, yes, they're taking, I believe, a ship, and it's gonna be... I don't know, they, might, on they ship. might walk it. They might take another three <laughs> three volumes to walk their ass up to the North Pole. No, I had to, I actually looked it up. They, they're going, they're taking this ship called the Argus Limited or something, and they're gonna be it's sitting a Gen on Genlock reference. Is that a Genlock reference? I don't know, I'm just making fucking shit up. Um... No, it's 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 just it's just it's stupid. They're taking the relic to Atlas for some reason, and then uh, when they get to Atlas, uh, they're gonna there's gonna be a big grim, and there's gonna be Adam, and he's gonna get jobbed so hard. <laughs> I would like it if, and I know this is a little bit out there, but I would like it. You know, Atlas is it's on an is it on an iceberg or like a frozen tundra? It's like a frozen tundra from what they described, but we never got to see any 3D models of it. See, so what, it's going to be mo it's going to be matte paintings again like Mistral was. <laughs> you're going to get 2D shit. Yes. But um what uh in my mind is I think Atlas is if you take the ruby the red trailer and strip away all the trees and just throw a little castle right there. That's what I think Atlas should be because that's like North Polish or something. Oh yeah. Now what I would really like is that um, a demonstration of Elysium Force. So let's just say there's panic inside Atlas. You know, it attracts Grimm. And the Grimm are like like crawling over the tundra, but Atlas has a way of dealing with them. I would like to see like some type of security defense or a show of force, some sort of interesting animation to, to hook you people instead of talking <laughs> battle in the snow or something like that. Oh yeah, that'd be nice, you know, have have to do, do like using oh, snow banks as cover and stuff. Last like Jedi, that. but I was like, wait, no, that's a mistake. <laughs> Don't do the last Jedi. <laughs> no no no, don't worry. It's lemon. Yeah, uh, no no no, don't do that. Uh, the, that that snowy field thing was pretty cool, but like ultimately pointless. But it would be really cool to see like an ice battle where, you know, the chance of you slipping or something could actually play a vital role in, in the fight and stuff. No, or I'm like, thinking... like utilizing that to get around enemies, you know, slide under them, you know, use them, fling the others into another, etc. I would like it if the White Fang at some point in time in the next volume attacks Atlas along with Grimm, and uh, the soldiers are obviously using like snowbanks as like cover and stuff like that, kind of like Hoth from you know the Star Wars Battlefront or something like that. But Weiss can like manipulate the snow and like create tunnels or you know wave snow waves or whatever you call it, giving like Elysium troopers cover, also giving like cool like uh, cinematic points or something like that, or like it would just be cool. I think the problem with that though is that with Adam being jobbed in Volume Five, uh, they were like, oh, the White Fang aren't gonna follow a leader who abandons his people. So I don't think the White Fang are gonna be a threat anymore. They're just gonna be. It's just, uh, gonna, it's oh just Adam. It's literally just Adam, yeah. He's definitely gonna show up in Volume Six because they've been, they've been hyping him. Uh, and I say hype in quotes because you know he's, a, he's a trash character now. I mean he's always trash, but now he's like worthless because he got one shot in by Blake, and then he Naruto ran away. He didn't even get one shot. He got love tapped on the back. 
he, he got he got like uh he got the double double whammy fist thing i would totally to love back. it if adam was like i've been a victim of abuse me too <laughs> that'd be so fucking funny uh, he shows up to the- atlas with like a me too pin on his jacket uh, you know, Archie wouldn't do that. He's a bad guy. He's a dude. He can't have him as part of the Me Too. All right, well, I got, I mean, I answered all my questions. If you want to ask me anything, that's cool. Well, I don't really have many questions to ask, but if you got some more left, by all means. What would you like to do, but you can't? Would I like your, to do, on, but I can't? On your, like, your channel or on, you know, any platform or something. I would like to upload more, just because of the fact that I don't have i don't know i don't really have a lot of time to do anything really because this college just doesn't want me to have any free time <laughs> i was supposed to upload a video for example at like uh the start of september but i never got around to it this is ozpin oscar video basically another one of uh making fun of ozpin possessing oscar is that like the gif of like you know it, ghost- it, of Ozpin just like bursting out of Oscar's mouth, yeah, that that's yeah. part of the video. That's gonna be funny. I'm gonna watch that. Li- I'm gonna watch it when you upload it. If I upload it, I don't think I'll be able to upload it till like December because it's it's just a lot of work. Is it like already made or is it still a work in progress? I I feel like I I said I drew all the stuff, but that's kind of untrue. I drew all the stuff that I felt was like necessary, but now I look back and I'm like, oh wow, I could do this so much better. So I'm liar. Like, Liar! Scrapping a bunch of stuff, you know. I don't. It, it's it's weird because it's like you look at something, and you're like, yeah, this is good for now. But then it's like a month later, you look back at your art, and you're like, oh, this is shit. <laughs> it's it's really sad, but that's yeah, kind of how it's been. I can't draw for Jack. This photo you're looking at, this isn't me. That's Gabriel C. Uh, let's see what else. I could talk about the other anti Ruby creators. Can you list? I mean, I know there's Fat Man Falling, Muffin Man Dan. I would consider a vexed viewer an anti Ruby advocate. Who else would fall into that camp? Uh, he's he's not really anti Ruby. He's just anti bad writing. But uh, like, any, but like anyone else at the on off the top of your head. I mean, I don't go on YouTube trying to look for like. There's no anti Ruby category, but hmm. I'm trying to think. Anti Ruby. I would say, well, I would say we were kind of anti Ruby, but that's just how a lot of people paint us. I mean, we're. I, I just said earlier that we're. I'm like anti RT, but even that's kind of not really true. I just want them to change their ways so they can improve upon, you know, their work. I want them to actually consider making quality content instead of just churning out shit after shit. You know. Well, you say anti RT. I say anti Ruby, and there's a reason why. I say anti Ruby because. Um, I don't like where the show is going. There's a lot of things that could change to make it better. But I say anti-Ruby because it's just a show is bad. That show is bad. The rest of RT is good. I love Million Dollars, but I love um, sometimes listening to sometimes listening to the podcasts. I like other stuff. You know, you, you could say Red versus Blue, but I wasn't I wasn't watching Rooster Teeth in 2003, so can't say I'm on that train. So you just don't like you you don't like you don't like the RT people, but you think some of their other stuff is good. I think a lot of this, a lot of stuff just could be improved upon. You know, I don't not big on uh, Miles or Carrie or, or definitely Gray, uh, but Bernie's pretty cool. He wrote earlier seasons of RVB and and they work. They're great. I love them. I don't understand why he ever thought it was good to step down and let someone my age take the reins with no experience or anything as a writer and so yeah it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me i don't know i think just bernie has made you know like miles terrible decisions and you know he needs to be checked up on but he's he's the chief so he can't really do that all right you can't check yourself what do you think of the soundtrack of the uh, ruby do you think it should change do you think it's good what would you add i would uh the soundtrack isn't like that great there's only really two kind of songs there's the piano ones and then there's the uh you know the somber piano then they also have just rock that's that's the only two kinds of music that they have going and it gets really repetitive they use the same chord progressions they use the same sort of things they recycle a lot now that doesn't mean you know jeff is a bad comp 
composer or that Casey's a terrible singer. I just feel like they need to do more variety of things. They need to they need to try more stuff. They otherwise like the soundtrack's just too repetitive and and dull. And I feel like that dullness is kind of what helped, you know, helped with the backlash of Volume Five because it's like you have no good songs. You have no good animation, you have no good story, and you have no action at all. I feel like if the soundtrack needed to change, I would add hip-hop and rap. And here's why. Um, listening to hip-hop and rap, you get this aggressive feeling and aggressive tone. And I think that's what this show desperately needs. It has the setting, and it has characters who fit an aggressive type problem is the music just does not correlate with those characters when adam strolls up onto the scene i want a piano playing i want like a a trap beat i want like rap coming out when he's like slashing foes i want a rap song would have been really good imagine playing legend has it by uh run the jewels for the uh sienna short that came out a while ago just overlay it and take away the music and just add their voices and the sound effects and it would be 10 times better i guarantee it but I wish they just do more of that. I wish they do more different stuff. And I think they're trying, honestly. Deep down, I think they are really trying. But uh, it's not being expressed. It's not being shown, which is their biggest problem. And with that, we end the Ruby Radio Show broadcast. Thank you, Floof, again, for coming on uh, out of your busy day. Uh, I hope to see you in the future making great content, being on Fat Man again. And that is it. Thank you all for listening, and everyone, have a great day.